Hello everybody. This is Alan from Alan Walls Photography and Advanced Electronics Disassembly. You are catching me just as I begin the process of uh, scavenging some of these things from one of these things. Amazingly, it was only very recently that I found out the amazing stuff that's contained inside these little gray squares. <laughs> I don't know what any of them do. The other day, I took uh, an hour or so and went to one of the local thrift shops uh, to see what I could find, and I came up with a, a car radio and a photograph printer and this old television set. I think it's a television set. It's got a screen on the other side. If you have ever thought about maybe doing some photography of the innards of uh, modern electronics, I highly recommend it. It's, it is tremendous fun and it's almost as, it's almost as exciting as the first time you photographed an insect or a flower at high magnification. The main thing that I'm going after is definitely is definitely these things. I'm going to show you where I go to look for these. Um, when I find them, I'll show you how to take them off the boards that they'll be stuck to. And then with a little bit of luck, I'll show you how to get the actual chip out of the inside of one of these packages. As far as appliances or, or devices to look for. I've, I've developed a set of uh, rules, Allen's laws, I'll call them. <laughs> if the device that you're looking at, if you have absolutely no idea how it can work, if it seems to work by magic, that's the best kind of device to get. If you get one that you know how it works, then it probably doesn't have very many microprocessors in it. That's what these are called, I think, microprocessors. They're almost identical to food processors, just smaller, gray, they don't cut food. Yeah, otherwise, about the same. A word of caution, if you're messing around with electronics, even if they you know for a fact they've been sitting on a shelf gathering dust and it haven't been plugged in in two years. Uh, I recommend that you, you assume that everything that you're touching was just recently plugged in and that it has capacitors that are charged with electricity. So if you're not comfortable doing this, don't do it just because I'm doing it for crying out loud. Probably a good rule of thumb is to just start unscrewing stuff and, and don't touch anything that looks electrical. If you were planning on putting this back together so that you could watch tonight's rerun of the Golden Girls, just don't take it apart in the first place. That would be my, my advice. Something's holding this together. Oh, it, <laughs> it was gravity holding it together. Almost all the wires, in, at least in modern electronics, just plug in with these cool little uh, electrical plugs. So another thing I do early on is just pull all of them out so they're out of the way. Now oh, this was glued on, I see. Yeah, that... No, that's not glue, is it? Anyway, all right. This is the power supply right here. This is the part that's attached to the wall. There's all kinds of good stuff to scavenge from these. Um, I see several very nice looking microprocessors, um, which will use one of these. The, the way to tell that it's a good microprocessor is if, by good I mean good for photographing, is if it has lots and lots of legs. See this one? It's got a lot of legs. When you look at one of these things, 
uh, like like this one. Uh, all of those different areas, those rectangular areas, do different things. There's input registers, output registers, uh, arithmetic registers, and cache registers, I think, are all the ones. I, I taught myself all about this last night, so I'm pretty much up to speed. There's one big mama capacitor right in the middle, and if if anything on this is going to give me a nasty surprise, it will be that. What I'm, what I'm going to do is, is drain that. Until that has been done, I just don't touch anything electrical looking until I'm 100% sure there's no stored up electricity. It's like every time I do this, I'll find another couple of dozen awesome photographs from from bits or pieces uh, here. I cut them open sometimes, um, sand them until the innards are visible. These, these long shaped ones, I, I don't know if you can see that, do have chips in them, but they're really tiny. There we go. If you look at the videos, there's all kinds of different ways people discharge these. I'm just going to bridge the capacitor with a screwdriver. Safety glasses are on. Where is it? There it is. Okay, so if there was anything going on, if that thing had any current in it, it may or may not have sparked when I did that, but it would have, it would discharge the capacitor. That just means it would dump all of its electricity across the bridge here. Okay. This is where we're going to focus our attention because these are the, these are the chips that we want. This is how big the chips are. That coin is a dime physical architecture of, of a chip is it's a package of epoxy or some other kind of resin that gets really, really hard. Um, I think they bake it. Um, and inside of that, let me grab one to show you. This one looks uh, promising. So I didn't start getting successful in opening these things till I realized that most of them have the same physical construction. They have this epoxy on both sides. All of these wires on the outside connect to a smaller group. These are called lead frame. And on, on the inside, they're copper wires. In fact, these might be copper and they're just covered in solder, but uh, they, they form like a spider web of copper wires. And at the end of that is a metal plate. And that metal plate is our best friend because the, the blank side of the silicone chip sits on that metal plate. Uh, so the, the silicone chip is directly underneath the, oh, sorry, wrong side, is directly underneath the resin on the front. And there's a metal plate underneath it with wires coming out of it. So as we break these things open, those wires can be a lifesaver to grab hold of and gently pull the chip up out of the resin. I'll show you what it means, but it's really important to know that uh, because the longest time I was pulling them in either direction and some of them were breaking, some of them would just never come off. Uh, the best chips that I've found so far are Sony. Anything with Sony stamped on it usually has really cool chips inside. They're incredibly complicated and uh, they open up really easy. They're the best ones to, to get apart. The bigger chips almost always have slightly bigger silicone, but I have opened some that had no size to them at all on the outside. They were tiny little chips and they were almost all silicone on the inside. So it's like a box of chocolates. <laughs> oh dear, what was that film? The people who make these boards, they're called PCBs.
which stands for printed circuit board, I think. But the people who make them have no sense of humor and they, I think, clearly don't like people like me because they, they have invented this evil material called Loctite, which they slather on some of these screws that makes them virtually impossible to get out. I keep everything. I have boxes and boxes and boxes, but I don't know what any of them are, so I just match the ones that look alike. And then when I get a chance, I'll go and, and look up what it is from its numbers uh, so I can put a name on the, uh, on the box. But if I ever end up in a situation where I absolutely have to build a robot I still won't know how to do it, but I'll probably have enough parts. I, I was taking apart something the other day, a little screen from a printer, uh, a color printer with a little color screen, only this big. And when I put it under the microscope and got some good uh, backlighting, through lighting, uh, this is what I saw. And it just blew me away. Each one of those little colored squares has has a little wire in it, which uh, is presumably how they get turned on and off. So the only tools that you're going to need uh, to both get the chips off uh, or to get the microprocessors off and open them are going to be a couple of pairs of pliers two pairs of pliers and um, a good idea to have a nice pair of tweezers as well. And the idea to get these off is one of them, this one is surface mounted. Uh, that means that the wires, the legs on the thing don't go all the way through the board. They just stop on the board. They're much easier to get off with heat the ones that go through the board are, um, no, that's surface mount too. I was wrong. Okay, so both of these should come off fine. And really all you have to do is, is heat them with the um, peak gun. Now this is a Wagner heat gun. I think it's made for removing paint from things. But it's perfect for this. By the way, a quick digression. This, look what else I found at the thrift shop. This thing actually works. It's a Yashica film camera made in Japan. I already had one and this was on, uh, on the shelf for $4.90. Yep. I had to get that, that's nice. I have a feeling it's got to be worth more than $4. And the other digression, we'll do both digressions at once. You, you remember those old fashioned flashy uh, lights that you'd have on your alarm clock where the numbers all look boxy? I found several of those in a recent thing I tore apart and um, I wanted to figure out how they worked. And this is basically what they look like as a layer of plastic on top of this, which is like a screen. Uh, but when I pried that off, this is what I found. And I'll put a proper picture um, up here. It's tiny, tiny, tiny light bulbs. They're flat. They've just got one little wire that when a current passes through it, it glows and that's what you were looking at it just the light only came out where the square thing would allow it to come out I, that's just amazing just amazing i tried to actually ignite one of the lights and i think i had too much electricity and the thing just popped all right there are two ways to do this one is to have it on one of these stands and so I've got two hands, one to apply the heat and one to pop the thing off with. I really don't like that because this is not stable. 
It, it really isn't. I don't, I don't like it. This costs less than that camera. So you can tell that's probably the safest way to do it, but I'm going to do it the way I usually do it. That's just going to cause problems. And here's a pro tip for electronic disassembly of things. Borrow your wife's, or in, the, in my case, my grandmother's oven mitt. It's probably made of asbestos. That's how old it is. But this thing is going to get really hot. And if you forget how hot it is and just put it down, it'll burn the counter. So here's all there is to it. I put this on high power and then with a pair of pliers, I hold this. Now you, you want to be careful because the, the heat will vent down off this and uh, it, your hand will suddenly get hot. Don't touch anything metal that, that this is under the heat gun with because it gets hot all of a sudden. So this is the way I'll do it. Well, I'll start with that little one in the middle. High power. If you look really closely, you'll see the the solder suddenly gets shiny. And by the way, all the other components will fall off too. It goes from being fixed on there to suddenly being off. That's why I have this pad down here is so that I can put the board down on there. And there's the, uh, there's the chip. I don't know what, who makes this one. U R M C. No idea. But um, yeah, this is what we're going to break open to find the little piece of magic uh, silicone. So I'm gonna leave that there to cool and let's get this other one. If I, if I hadn't been talking while doing this, I would have just moved on to the, the next one because interestingly, when you heat an area of one of these PCBs, you're actually heating up the whole PCB. I mean, all of these are conductors. So uh, while they don't get melty, if, if while that was still hot, I could have pulled all of these capacitors out. Uh, I just don't need any more capacitors. So let's take that, that uh, last one off. Holy mackerel. There we go. Number two. This one was checked by Mr. 8410. Now the difficult part. What I'm clipping off is the legs. I found that it heats better with these legs cut off for some reason. But a word of caution is these chips are almost never at the center. They can be at one end or the other, but the one thing you can count on is that the chip at its most vulnerable point is gonna be on the side with the writing. So the top of the chip, the silicon chip is right underneath the first layer of that. And all the goodies on the chip are faced this way. So they're faced up to, to, to the writing. We've got much more room to play with underneath the silicone chip because there's a metal plate that all of these wires connect to. 
And that metal plate has usually got several uh, pretty stout uh, copper wires going into that plate. Uh, and they're good handles because we're going to have to, we have to pull the metal plate down from the underside of the silicone. But the trick is to get it just hot enough. And one of the things you'll notice, especially with a thick chip like this, is that it will um, make a popping noise uh, when it gets to the right temperature. That is the, I've heard people say it's from steam building up on the inside, but I, for the life of me, I'm not sure why there'd be any water on the inside of this thing. I think it's just the architecture of the resin giving, giving way. And there's a lot of, the way that epoxy is, when it gets hot enough, it'll start to crack. And the, this, depending on how thick it is, uh, can, split open beautifully to reveal the chip, but more commonly it just kind of crumbles. So what I do is I figure out where I think the chip is gonna be in relation to the package. And it seems to be typically down at the site, uh, the spot with the dot, but this one's got two dots. So I don't know, I'm just gonna grab it about one quarter of the way onto the chip. And once I get it hot enough, I'm going to grab the other end and then wiggle it ever so slightly. All I'm looking for is for the epoxy to separate a bit and then I'll try to slide it off. That's the first trick uh, and it hardly ever works. Uh, but once or twice I've done that and had the, the piece of silicone just fall out. 99% uh, of the time that does not happen. So let's see what's in this one. I seem to have better luck heating the chip side first. Is it supposed to make that noise? Yeah, that's hot. It's soft, but it's not there yet. You can see it bending. Okay, it just gave on one edge. All right. Now, you can see the, the lead frame, the, all the wires going in there. And I think we're at the edge of the chip. So I'm gonna just keep going. All right, you can see the edge of the metal plate that's underneath the chip, right there. So I'm gonna ease around to this edge and I'm gonna try to break this off. Once the chip, once the, the silicone is partially exposed, it starts to uh, destroy the, um, uh, 
it starts to destroy the architecture on the chip. So you can see now that we have the metal plate with two of the lead wires coming out of it. The silicone chip is right above that plate, still covered in epoxy. So we've got more work to do. Now I'm heating the, the side with the silicone. Now it's not, it's not breaking where I want it to. But you can see now the, the edge. So the edge of the chip is right here. I'm going to try to break it right at that edge. Now I think I just smacked, snapped it in half. Now this is definitely looking better now. Okay. This is the, the lead frame plate that I was telling you that is underneath, underneath the chip, right there. You know it's the chip because if you look at it from the side where it's been exposed, it glints like glass. Now this is the most common uh, disappointing outcome to have because now I have the silicone chip out of the package but still stuck to the uh, uh, to the underlying epoxy, and there's nothing for me to grab hold of to get this off the epoxy. If I tried to bend and break this now, I would snap that glass-like layer. But I'm not giving up. Remember, this is the back of the silicone, so everything that we want to photograph is on the front, facing the front of the package. Okay, what I'm gonna do is, is heat this one more time and just see if luck is on our side today. If I can find a way to hold it, because it'll crumble uh, if it gets hot enough, but there is a small possibility that once this gets boiling hot, that I'll be able to use the tip of a very fine pair of tweezers to pop the glass forward. Usually, if you do that, you end up scratching the die. This is called a die, uh, and it's just not as pretty anymore. So let me give this a try. Oh, did you see that? Tell me it didn't go down into the heat machine. Oh, there it is. That, my friends, is a victory. This is about what I would have expected for size. It's maybe two millimeters across. Oh, and you can almost make out the beautiful architecture on the surface there this is this is perfect what makes this ideal is that even though it got a lot of heating no part of the chip was heated directly it was covered by the epoxy until i was able to pop it off that last piece my hit my success rate with these is not very good so to get a a, a really nice looking chip first shot is exciting yeah if you have any questions let me know that's really that's really all there is to it if you're anything like i am 
spending a relaxing morning with a big mug of coffee, taking stuff apart that you don't know anything about, and seeing how it works or not seeing how it works in my case, is just the, some of the most relaxing fun. I really, really, for all my joking around, I thoroughly enjoy this. And discovering so much cool stuff to photograph is just a, a, a real bonus. But anyway, if you give it a try, please be very careful. Until I see you again, take care, be safe. Roger and out.